Next item on the agenda is uh, regarding the FY16 budget. And I just wanted to bring this uh, to the board because I feel we need to have a discussion around this with the vote um, last Tuesday. You see the approval of Article 4, which was the Budget Committee's recommended number, which is um, approximately $393,000 less than the, bud than the board, uh, the school board's recommendation. So right now we're looking at operating um, at, a, uh, at a number that is $393,000 less than our anticipated expenses. Uh, so I would um, like to have a conversation with the board uh, and ask the board uh, if they will give me the approval to notify the association of potential reduction in force. Um, because we would have to make that notification prior because we have to let teachers know that they have contracts by April 15th. Uh, so I would hope that this evening the board would give me that approval so I can put the association on notice. The, the issue really comes around um, that we had $273,000 of um, estimated and I would consider anticipated <coughs> revenues for federal funds. And then $120,000 was taken out of um, the proposed budget for 10, that's 10 tuitioned high school students, uh, which is another $120,000. Basically, it's $120,600. So you put those two together, it's $393,000. What I would, what I'd recommend we do at this point it with in order to avoid uh, potential layoffs is that we consider the $273,000 in federal funds as unanticipated revenues and follow the law to hold <coughs> a public hearing and have a vote at the board level to accept and um, expend up to $273,000 so we can avoid any shortfalls in the budget and be able to accept our federal entitlements in order to maintain our Title I programs uh, as well as our professional development through 2A. Uh, I, I believe that we can do that because if you look at and refer back to the presentation that I did on the MS-27, you'll see that the column of the Budget Committee recommendation, which ultimately was the number that the voters approved, within that column the federal funds were not listed as anticipated revenues. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we consider them as unanticipated revenues and hold the public hearing, listen to what the public has to say, and then the board makes a vote as to whether we accept and expend up to the $273,000, and that would be my recommendation to avoid teacher layoffs and having a substantial impact on the direct instruction for our students, particularly our Title I students. <coughs> Okay. Um, didn't we go out and expect uh, expend money for legal services about this whole particular issue? Wasn't this the whole thing with the budget committee? And we, we like I said, we've already spent funding, and the lawyer said you cannot just you cannot do with what you just proposed that we have to put. The um, the uh, federal funding in as revenue. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Right. And now you want to just ignore that and? No, I'm actually not ignoring it at all. I'm finding a way that we can actually accept and expend those federal funds as unanticipated revenues. The legal the legal memo was based on the fact that we should be gross budgeting and including those federal entitlements within our, our estimated and anticipated revenues, which they were not, uh, based on Tuesday's vote. Um, so now we consider those unanticipated revenues because they weren't listed as anticipated revenues on our MS-27. So we actually tried to follow specifically, and the board's recommended number, which was in the article, did follow the legal opinion that was distributed to uh, the budget committee as well as the the board. So at this point, we're looking to consider them unanticipated revenues because they weren't listed as anticipated revenues. I, I, I see a peanut in the shell for some reason. I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see how you can say, well, we legally we have to make them anticipated <laughs> revenue, but now because that passed, now what? Now we're just going to go and make it unanticipated revenue. I mean, I, I that, uh, yeah, this doesn't sound kosher to me at all. Bonnie. I think it's a lousy option to have to lay off teachers. I, um, and um, I would want to ask you to implore all of your, all of your knowledge and who you have available to you to see what's, what we can, I want to make sure that, because we've already been told by legal counsel that we had to do it one way. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure before we make another decision that we're doing it legally and that we're not going to have ramifications from that. So we're going to spend more money on legal. Well, how do you, then, then you look, I understand what you're saying, but you... I don't think we should look to the federal government for anything myself, but... Well, that's... $393,000 is a lot of money, and unless we look at you and say, where can we cut it without cutting teachers? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I did contact legal to get their advice on this. Um, th can we do this? And I received the go ahead and do it from legal um, because I questioned it as well. However, I see it as an option in order to not lay off teachers because that is what we will have to do to come up with three hundred ninety three thousand dollars now it might not be the full three ninety three because I estimated high on the two hundred seventy three thousand dollars however you're still looking at a substantial um, a substantial reduction in the budget because the the what was voted on in article four is our cap for spending that is our cap for spending and we know it takes more than that to operate this school and in order to come up with that amount of money, you're talking about salaries. And what I'm proposing is an option to avoid a reduction, particularly impacting our Title I program with those students that need the additional support. And we're still required, regardless of whether we accept Title I monies or Title IIA monies, to provide those programs and that professional development we still have to provide direct instruction to students that qualify for Title I. We still have to put monies aside for homeless um, students. We have to put money aside for private tutor, private school tutoring before and after school, uh, parent involvement, supplies, and that's not written into the operating budget or is it included in the number that was voted in on Tuesday. So we're looking at a reduction. Well, I don't believe we have to look at a reduction. I, I agree that the things you're citing as necessities are there and they are necessary. But if the town has, um, or the district has budgeted X amount of money, and at the end of a, of a school year, the operating budget has a return of six hundred or eight hundred thousand dollars back to the town. We will be all right if we're if we're if the town voters said no to an extra or, or four hundred thousand dollars out of the operating budget. Remove that, and the town voters said that that's removed. In, in my opinion, I don't know. I'm not a any kind of expert, but I believe that at the end of the year. If we've been returning half a million or six hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand dollars and haven't reduced any of our spending, you know, in fact increased our spending, maybe we need to decrease spending on some things. But we're still returning money. All, all the end result, I think, next June thirtieth, is we're going to have less money to return to the to the town. Nobody's job is at risk. It's it's crazy. It's Steve. Um, 
where you've already got the legal opinion, it won't cost us, therefore it won't cost us any more money to get a legal opinion. I'd like a copy of the legal opinion, please. So you would like for me to get that in a memo form? Well, you didn't. I didn't ask for a memo. But it's going to be in the bill, so we're getting copies of the bill, so mm -hmm. we'll see it eventually. Well, we may not see. We will see it as a dollar figure in the bill, but you're not going to see it as the legal opinion. But I, Mr. Kersey? So why wouldn't you believe me that our lawyer said that it was okay to do it? Why would? Because I have a the problem. Because the lawyer began with, you can't do it because you have to do it this way. And now, because it didn't pass that way, now we're going back to what the lawyer said that we couldn't do in to begin with. So, to protect the taxpayers, I would like to make sure of, of what's going, you know, what, what what's happening. Because I, I'm having a problem with, we were told that, I mean, there was a big to-do, was already spent, I don't know how much money on legal, because it... The bu it was all at the budget committee. The budget committee questioned it. No, no, this is the way we got to do it. It's got to be anticipated. It was voted down as anticipated. Well, now we'll just change it to unanticipated. Uh, it, not to mention the fact that the voters voted no. So I would have a problem just telling the voters to go fly a kite and, and spend the money anyways. Mr. Tersey? My intention is to protect the students and the staff within this building from having a negative impact from working knowingly in a deficit, which is what I'll be doing if we do not come up with that amount of money that we know we're going to be in deficit for starting the school year off. If you get a surplus at the end of the year, you're getting that through unanticipated revenues, such as we lose five high school students, which we already had 10 taken out. You see that money as a return, as an unanticipated revenue. If we have a student that moves back into the district from an out-of-district placement at $100,000, that's an unanticipated revenue, which starts jacking your surplus right up. However, if you recall through the budget cycle, that budget was thin. And we came in lower than this year's budget. So if we're budgeting well, you're not looking at a surplus, a substantial surplus to return back to the taxpayers. And what I'm looking at right now is an option, a potential solution to make sure that students are not directly impacted by working in a deficit knowingly working in a deficit. And I am not willing to work in a deficit because we should not have to go back to the voters at some point and ask for more monies if we know that we're going to be spending over our budget. And we're going into July 1st knowing that we're spending over our budget. It's not right. And the only way to come up with monies of that degree is not nickel and dime in a supply line here and there or a textbook here and there. It's through salaries. I disagree. And that's why I'm throwing the option out there. It's the board's decision. I, I firmly believe that you should give me approval to inform the association of potential reduction in force. And I will, if you don't want to have a public hearing, so be it. I put the option out there on the table for you to consider. I'll be working, if you do give me that approval for the reduction in force, I'll be working specifically with the president of both associations to work together, as well as Mr. Gregoire, to bring the board a proposal as to how we can find those monies. So I presented it. I'll leave it up to you to make a decision. Ralph? Has our enrollment of students increased in the last year, or has it decreased? At the high school level, up to K through 12, there's a Roman. We've down had a minimal there. decrease. A minimal decrease. Mm -hmm. So.
so if in the 24 months prior to this coming budget end, we had, I just, <laughs> I believe there's going to be less of a return to the town at the end of the operating season. I, I it's just kind of, I, don't know, I see it as, as you know, it, I've heard it, scare tactic, and that's what it seems to be. But, I mean, I, I sat on the budget committee for a while, and I and I do believe that if the money, <laughs> uh, you can't t punish teachers because. The town says don't spend so much money. Mr. Tversky? If you pulled up that operating budget document, the worksheet, and you looked in there, could you find those monies? Could you find three hundred let's say we get it to three hundred thousand dollars, could you find those monies? Are there three hundred lines in that budget? Probably more. All right. I bet I could. Mm -hmm. Probably a thousand dollars out of each line. The only lines you can Control are your uncontrollable are your controllable costs. Contractual salary obligations you can't control. Health benefits you can't control. Contracted services you can't control. So you would have to minimize those lines to what you can actually control, and that's what you would be looking at if you're not talking about salaries, which are minimal. I'm willing to bet we could probably save fifty thousand in, in operating. Uh, uh, building and maintenance fairly easily just by putting things out to bid. I know it's a drop in the bucket, but it's something. Madam Chair, I express my concern and offered solutions. Thank you. Any thoughts? It seems like a, a threat. You know, oh, I didn't get a lot of going to cut jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a threat. It's our option. It's not a realistic option. I mean, if the teachers are here, they're here for a reason, right? I mean, everybody has a job because they're needed. There's no unnecessary or non-essential jobs in the school building, from what I understand. Mr. Tercy? Our Title I and our Title IIA funds, the majority of those funds are taken up by two salaried positions. If we are not accepting those federal funds, which make up the 200, 200 plus thousand dollars, there's two positions right there that aren't in our operating budget. That's a reduction in force. But we re represented to the voters that we are taking. That's gross budgeting. We, we represented to the voters on the, on the ballot that we're taking that money. If we take those monies, then we have to find it in the budget. If we take away those monies. If we don't utilize those monies, okay, if we use those monies, then we're looking at taking those monies out of the operating budget, all of those lines we're referring to. We're capped at, was it $8.8 .8 million? That's what we have approval to spend. We know in our estimates and based on our current staffing that it's above that number. So I don't want to go into July 1st knowing that I don't have the money to pay for our current staffing levels. That's just bad business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means starting your fiscal year knowing that you're going to be in debt and you can't pay the people that you hired. It's just bad business. And I'm offering a solution. If, we get, if I get beat up over it, I get beat up over it. Bottom line, I'm keeping teachers in the building and walk, coming into July 1st with the comfort level that I won't have if we say, oh, we can operate without those monies. So your solution is to say that the federal Title I or Title IIA funds are unanticipated monies. Correct. That's your solution. Because that's how we reported it. 
um, on the budget committee recommendation column of the MS-27 that was that was published, it was displayed, and the number that was voted on was the number at the bottom of that column. It's not listed as anticipated revenues, so we consider them unanticipated revenues, and we move forward. <laughs> now I'm starting to see the budget committee's argument. You know why? So I, I don't know. I mean, I. Yeah, we have. Uh, you need. Um, you have to notify them by the f April fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So we have time. We have another meeting before them. Correct, and I would have to come to you with a proposal at that next at meeting. That next meeting. Right. However, I I highly recommend you give me the authority to at least notify the association mm -hmm. of a potential reduction in force because I can't even have that conversation with the association without that notification. Uh, I'm wondering whether we should have this conversation with the budget committee. Board decision at this point. <coughs> Can we table this decision until our next, uh, until our first meeting in April? That's what I just asked. Yes, I said stated, but I mean, I, I I think might have to work a little bit harder in the in the time between that first meeting and April fifteenth. But I I know I'd like to go over the budget lines and see <laughs> out of those three hundred or plus lines where we can save and bring it to you. It, it, I think we have the ability to, to sharpen a pencil and, and make some some uh, cuts without cutting jobs. If we give you the authority to talk to the association, Michael, does that mean when you come back you can give us a plan, detail, mm -hmm. black and white? Yep. And what? Absolutely. That's that would allow us to at least present a plan um, based on following what our agreement is with the association. Um, I want to get the teachers input, I want to get the paraprofessionals input because this could have an impact on uh, the school in general. So I want to work together to develop a plan, present that plan to the board at our first meeting in April. Without the authorization to uh, notify for potential RIF, it's out of the question because you won't have enough time between the our first meeting on April 15th to determine what that would look like. I just want to cover our bases of what we agreed on with the associations. Well, the threat of a riff, what, how would that ripple throughout the building? How many people would start going, hey, hey buddy, <laughs> how you doing? And you know what that would do to the morale in the building? It's already it's out there. It's, it's already out there. Right? It's sitting here. These people are sitting here. When, it's, it's when people know it's that amount of money, Ralph, they know. it's salaries. It doesn't have to be salaries. It's a plan. I think we should go ahead with it. Uh, I, I make the motion to give Michael the authority to begin speaking to the association so we can get a firm black and white. This is what we have for a plan. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With the plan, I mean, I just don't want it to be a threat. Opposed? I'll vote in the affirmative. Yeah, okay. me too. Please, Michael, proceed with that. I will. Thank you. We could probably get the things together. And yes, I mean, right, we, and we, we could look at it. We should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would highly recommend that the board looks at that budget as well. You know, we're fortunate right now because if you look at the reduction of the 10 students, our enrollment at high school is down by seven students. So we're, we're looking at three, three students right now, which is around $38,000. No However, that's a gamble right. um, because if we get which we could gamble with because we, if we get a couple students here and there, we're looking at $24,000 compared to $200,000, $300,000. So there is some wiggle room. However, thank you for the authority to at least have the conversation and notify the union. It's not a threat. It's, it's being proactive as to what could potentially happen. So thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair.
kind of uh, try to get what um, you said. When when is competency based? Ed?